Grand Rising, my friends. Long time no see. And it was not in particular. I was just busy with real, real life and real things. Not that this isn't real and the things we discuss are not real, but you know what I mean. Miss everyone, if you're new, hey there, what's up? Jump on in. The water's always perfect. Hey, um, I want to give a shout out. My boy came up with this Fly City Mogul stuff, gear. Now, I get nothing from this. I bought this my own money. I just think it looked fresh and dope and fly and all those shop things that are out there. So if you're interested, I'll put a, a link down. I'll pin a message down in there. Uh, ETH continues. Look, we almost had half a um, half a million Ethereum have been burned. We're getting close. How crazy is that? Almost at 1.5 billion now. Of course, the market's been doing quite okay recently, as you can see here. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is increasing. It's at 51. Uh, it's at 43.4 percent. Uh, Ethereum dominance is at 18.6 percent. But the price of Bitcoin today is 51,251 dollars. Ethereum 3,519. Cardano 2023. Since Cardano's been slow this week compared to how ETH, Binance, and uh, Bitcoin are taking off, and Shiba Inu is going. Nutty. It was up 49% yesterday. It's up 138% on uh, the week. It's um, gone up a zero. <laughs> Interesting, Shiba. And uh, Tezos is doing really well as well. Tezos, uh, where's Tezos at? Is that, oh, it dropped down. It was um, at $8. Now it's at $7.84. Right there. Axie Infinity up 90% on a week. Uh, the games on the blockchain are going to make a lot of money as well. Instead of um, pay to win, now they're going to be play to earn. You can make money from playing games. You ever farmed on Farmville or anything like that on Facebook or any game? I got a game I played where you breed and farm dragons. Now you will play that and earn money. You had to put a little bit of money in there initially to probably buy whatever it is, your farm equipment, but then you better earn money, buy more equipment, which makes more money. You know, that's going to be the future. And who who knew it? Because I, I know when we were kids, we used to get yelled at for thinking that you would make money playing games. But now that the future is here and we've made it to where you can make money playing games. Uh, stock market. Did pretty well today. The Dow, S and P, and Nasdaq were all up about a close to a percent, a little bit over, a little bit under, for the most part. Market's doing well. We're gonna skip straight to the positivity, which is if someone in your life that you love and you admire and you respect them, and you want to say something nice, write something in the comment section about them, and then pass this to them and say, "Hey, look what I wrote you about you on the internet," and get back with me in a mission. I haven't seen you in a while. Yesterday. Now, one of my homies reached out, D, who comments frequently on these uh, videos, and said, hey, go live. I was like, well, I'm nowhere near the, the sub subscriber count to be able to go live, buddy. But even then, what is going on? So, you know, for the most part, it, it came out. We all knew this. That, and, and are they connected? It would be too weird to not be coincident. That Facebook is getting a lot of flack for their algorithms and how their algorithms target the baser emotions in humanity and how this could affect wide swaths of individuals let's just say it like that and the next day after this big whistleblower came out a lot of um, internal documents from facebook you had uh, the 60 minute piece and then the next day you have this huge outage across all of facebook's domain now okay well i'll get to speculation land in a second not only were Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp down, but they their key cards couldn't work to get in buildings. They had to use wire cutters, boat cutters to get into certain spaces to try to work on a problem. So what happened? Had to be a nation state. Or as I was telling, I was thinking about it to my peoples, I said, hey, look, 
either you have a super brilliant lone wolf a la the character in the, the Jamie Foxx movie Bait, or you have a organization of individuals who are very talented and do other things that we have no clue about behind the scenes, or a nation state. This is not just a, oh, oh, we forgot to do the update and everything went down. This was an attack, period. Somebody showed them, like, we can shut you down if we decide. Play nice. So you know who I think did that, but we won't say who. You know, I don't know if they go on a war with any of these other people who have been attacking the United States lately, but you, you hope they would for our benefit, but they can show Facebook how they can shut them down if need be. And it's not for, for once, it's not China getting this, getting this down. <laughs> but moving on, looking at what's next. Hey, DC Comics is giving away potentially millions of free Ethereum NFTs. I've been meaning to do this since Friday, guys. I, I apologize for that. But so it came out on well you'll see this probably be a day uh day uh, later than i'm filming this which is the fifth so they're starting it on the fifth they're all free starting on the fifth they will offer free nft to anyone who registers to attend the dc fandom streaming event on october 16th so you still got 11 days uh 10 10 11 days from when you see this um i don't know how much it is to register but i'm gonna check out i haven't looked myself been meaning to uh, you know i'm gonna look to see if i can um about you can get a second one by uh, sharing about uh, the event through social media. Nah, that, nah, that's not gonna happen. But hey, if it's like free to register, then yeah, and I get an NFT. Oh, I will be registering to get my NFT from DC because they have great content to make into NFTs, as you can imagine, with all the superheroes. And they had to put the, the clamp down on their artists. They're like artists to say, hey, you can't don't make any NFTs with our uh, intellectual property. Earlier this year, they told his freelance artists not to sell independent NFTs featuring DC characters, which makes sense. I understand 100 percent. This guy generated one point eight million dollars worth of Ethereum from selling Wonder Woman theme NFTs in March. And they said that's after, um, you know, that came out that it was like, hey, 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 oof. hey, hey, guys. And people get mad stuff like that. But I like, look. You sign a contract with these companies and, you know, um, Chappelle famously was able to renegotiate after the fact for his contract. And it made sense because streaming platforms didn't exist then when you wrote these. And for these artists, I would also say that NFTs didn't exist. So it probably should be the fair thing is a bit of a sharing. And right now, Disney has a similar lawsuit from the families of the creators of some of the characters that have been in the Marvel Universe. They're saying, hey, we didn't know when they, you know went to go work at the at Marvel Comics and was creating characters who knew that six you know 40 years later that these same intellectual properties would branch out on so many different avenues even though you sign contracts to say that hey we can use whatever you create for us throughout through the entirety and this is literally in contracts if you didn't know if you've never seen a contract in the entertainment industry usually you'll say something like through the entirety of the universe and through perpetuity, meaning through all space and time, like they control the infinity gems. <laughs> Some call them stones, but the old school is gems from the comic books. But stones, infinity stones. Infinity nub nubs, the nub wub wubs. Or right now, infinity part of atoms. <laughs> granular, uh, granular atoms. Visa unveils universal cryptocurrency payment channel project for businesses. So Visa said since 2018, they've been working on this, what they call a UPC, a universal payment channel, where basically a hub where whatever comes in, um, Aave or Uniswap or uh, or uh, Solana, you'll be able to switch that over to right out to Chainlink. Uh, Shiba Inu, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, the big the big one, the big guns as well. So this universal payment center is basically gonna be a hub where they say, send us, send us your tire, your poor, your huddle masses, and we'll we'll figure it out. We'll get it to work. Now, of course, you know they go take their cut. So I don't imagine they saying it in here, but don't be foolish. Of course they're gonna take just maybe just a little bit of cream off of it. So with the universal payment channel, Visa hopes to provide greater accessibility to more banks, merchants, and businesses, whether transactions originate on this network or not, allowing an easier exchange of value for separate types of digital currencies. 
you know, Visa, they've always been pragmatic, which is, hey, it's happening. People spending money. Wow, well, got billions in it. We go see what's happening. Either it's go take off and we're here at the beginning or it's done nothing and no skin off our back. You know, we we probably going to make they probably and they have made money as is off cryptocurrency. So what's funding is funding itself going forward for a lot of these companies who've been invested in for the past several years, as you can imagine. Now, this is going to be a bit of interesting to see how this plays out. So Mt. Gox, for those who don't know, was an exchange. An exchange is you sign up, send money from your bank to them, buy whatever it is, whatever cryptocurrency, and you can either hold it on the exchange, like Coinbase is an exchange, Kraken is an exchange, Gemini is an exchange, Binance is an exchange. They're a centralized exchange. Someone controls it, has the keys to everything, and can make unilateral decisions about what happens. Now, there are also decentralized exchanges, DEXs, where it's completely ran by a smart contract on the blockchain. No one controls everything. Okay, but now we're talking about centralized exchanges. This is back in, I think, 19, in 2013, where Mt. Gox, this huge cryptocurrency, the biggest in the time, it controls 70% of global transactions in the time. Um, in 2014, filed for bankruptcy after a series of hacks that saw 850,000 Bitcoin disappear, almost a million Bitcoin, nearly 2% of the total amount of Bitcoin that will ever exist was hacked away. They've recovered 200,000 Bitcoin and have returned to the creditors and either they're going to give them either in a 200. Now, this is where it get crazy and where we're going to see how it does to the market. They now have a civil rehabilitation plan and their plan is either going to decide to give them either the say you had and I'm just going to use the simple numbers for now. You had 10 Bitcoin at the time and your 10 Bitcoins worth 100 a piece when they got hacked and took uh, or a thousand dollars, 10 Bitcoin, a thousand dollars. Right. So now they're deciding and this case is going to be decided next month of what to do with this Bitcoin that they recovered from they were able to recover some of the money or 200,000 of the Bitcoin out of the 850,000 Bitcoin. So who got that is, a, is another bigger question. Anyway, they're trying to decide next month, are they going to give you $1,000, which was the equivalent of how much money that you lost at that time, or 10 Bitcoin, the property that you lost at that time. So as you can imagine, if they decide to give the Bitcoin versus the cash equivalent, they are going to make a lot of people very, very rich who lost money. And I mean, look, hey, I if it was me, I'd be wanting my Bitcoin, quite honestly. I'd be like, man, you can keep that fiat, son, especially that seven-year-old inflation-ridden uh, fiat. You better give me what I lost. Make me whole. So the thought is that if all these people get this Bitcoin, they may dump and then a market may dump. So we're going to see what happens filed at the Japanese court by the online deadline of August 8th and the in-person deadline of 20th of October. I said August, but I'm in October. 8th of October and the inline deadline of 20 October. So keep an eye on the decision in this Japanese court about if they're going to favor the payout in 2014's pay uh, fiat or BTC how much the Bitcoin was worth at that time in fiat or in the actual Bitcoin itself intense workout shortly before bed found to impact sleep quality now I saw some data recently that's contradicting what this article is saying so there's still some research and understanding to be done but basically if you do physical physical activity helps you sleep better. Uh, cycling, according to this, is the best to help you get the best sleep. But you need to rest at least two hours before bedtime. Otherwise, you impact your sleep. So two hours appear to be the sweet spot where exercising up, even high intensity up until um, that point does not impact. It can even benefit your sleep. But... If you exercise too late in the evening when time to go to bed, you're not going to sleep well. Now, I've always taught that 
The data showed that that exercise in the evening time towards sleep time tend to impact sleep. But like I said, there's been some information that came out and I didn't quite peg down that I felt it was 100% to feel like I can argue with that yet. So I'm still going with the um, get some really good exercise, but make sure you don't uh, exercise too late in the evening because it can impact your sleep. And sleep is one of the most, and eating and sleep probably two, two of the most important things we do um, for ourselves on a daily basis. And we got to, you know, we have to take care of ourselves. We have to be very diligent in our care for ourselves because if we don't, who will? Now let's get into some fun, crazy stuff, all right? Jetpack Aviation's 150 mile per hour speeder, that's the called name, speeder, flying motorcycle will go on sale in 2023 for $380,000. Whoa, look at it. Look at the rendering. Look at the rendering. For those who can't see the screen, man, it looked like a futuristic, what you would expect. Like, it has probably a big fan in the middle of it. Um, but. It's like a big, it's tri very triangular, a lot, of, a lot of angular shapes with little wings coming off from the side. It has a man shape. I think, like I said, I think this is computer rendering. I'm not a, doesn't say on the picture or not. Um, but it looks like a rider on top and they are leaning forward kind of almost at a, off the, off the, off the uh, horizontal, probably like what, 30 degrees? Maybe 25 degrees in that point with two handles, a windscreen up front. Person got the helmet, look like a parachute on the back. I, mean, I definitely have a parachute. So anyway, these this company, Jetpack Aviation, has successfully completed initial flight test of his flying motorcycle named Speeder. The California-based company has started accepting pre-orders for the single-seater vertical takeoff and landing flying craft and claims deliveries will begin in 2023. Now, why do I think this may be something that is actually going to be popping soon? So right here. Jetpack Aviation Speeder was initially designed as a flying vehicle for the military and different government agencies, especially for rescue operations. However, the company later started working on a recreational version for personal use. The United States military is working on this initiative, the Air Force called, and I think Air Force Marines, if I'm not mistaken, powered by the Air Force, and I think Marines is heavily involved as well, called Agility Prime. Now, Agility Prime is plans to make flying cars. Could we write how the Air Force Civil Society do logistics and transportation? Agility Prime is a program to help usher in the not yet into the now. Dr. Will Roper, remember that name. This is the guy who not only talked about um, the next generation fighter plane for the uh, NGAD that we've tested and flown the sixth generation fighter planes already. Um, within like a year span using this very high speed uh, uh, computer aided design, basically CAD almost, but not quite, probably even faster than CAD. Um, I'm trying to remember if Will Roper, he's the one who also, no, nah, that was Naval that talked about a different thing. I'll show you another time. But so this is what they're calling flying cars. These basically drones, big drones until we can figure out probably what to do next. So the Air Force recently launched Agility Prime, a non-traditional program seeking to accelerate the commercial market for advanced air mobility vehicles, flying cars. And so this, they are trying to, so it's not an airplane, not a drone, not a helicopter, it's a flying car. And the world's ready to fly orbs. And I, you know, I tell people about this using electric vertical and takeoff and landing or preferred autonomous or hybrid technologies. 200 companies around the world, they, they, they're, they're really pushing it. They call it a modular bus. And the, Latin, the bus concept from the Latin term omnibus, meaning for all the central to a strategy. So for years, the DOD has explored how a modular bus similar to a satellite bus or universal serial bus could enable vast VTOL use. In other words, is there some type of base that everyone can agree upon and build off of? So this is, shows the Army proves that it can transport a flying car on a C-220, I'm sorry, a C-130, which is the heavy transport aircraft you see here. This individual flying this um, EV tall electric vertical and takeoff landing vehicle. So 
So, yeah, this is why I think. Yeah, they're building these things. They're going to be um, getting them ready to come out because the uh, United States Air Force has said we want uh, flying cars to take off within the next couple decades at least. So there's companies for that. Ilium. Uh, oh, man, it's, it's a bunch. So look into Ehang, Chinese, but they, a lot of the Chinese companies be getting hit lately. Not so much the car companies, weirdly, but. We'll see how, how far that goes, how long that goes. So the future is coming fast. They have two versions, an ultralight version and an experimental category version. Ultralight will be lightweight to me, as the name, will be lightweight to make it easy to operate. The company says it will weigh less than 125 cc motorcycle and won't, will not require a pilot's license. Training to operate the ultralight version will be offered by Jetpack Aviation or an authorized training center. The UVS, which is the experimental category version, I'm sorry, the ultra, uh, that's the ultra lightweight version is UVS, will be capable of carrying a five gallon fuel load and will reach speeds up to 60 miles an hour. The EVS, which is the experimental category version, won't come with the speed limiter and will be capable of flying at speeds close to 150 miles an hour. However, a pilot's license will be required to fly the unrestricted version. Both models will be equipped with full VTO capability to give it flexibility to land and take off from anywhere. This sounds almost too awesome. First off, it's too expensive. I mean, it's not too expensive, but, you know, it'll, the, things like this are very expensive. And then there's problems. And then over time, the technology gets way better and way cheaper by the time it filters down to us. And I'm calling myself right there with everybody and us and the vast majority of us so you know 20 years from now this probably be you know regular 20 30 thousand and everybody flying around in it but a lot of it, be, it will be autonomous by then so the we won't just like we will not be driving the cars we won't be flying the vehicles either the algorithms will be flying your vehicles uh so that's pretty much it. I'm a <clears throat> was um hope everybody had a great couple of days. Well, let me strike that. I know everyone had a great couple of days and you've all been doing well. Just here if you wondering what this is, maybe that's what I told you I wanna have one day is a TR three B. And it's, you know, is it real effect? That's for you to decide for yourself. But, you know. We'll see in a couple of years what the things we find out about. Anyway, I know everyone's doing well. We'll get back on to doing this a lot more. Not a lot more. We'll do this uh, back to the normal grind and the regularity you expect and enjoy so that, you know, see what's up. Um, it would be dope special effects if it was, but whew, and like that, it's gone. So with that said, I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.